All right, y'all. It's the Amanda Seals Show. I am Amanda Seals. And you know, it's time for me and DJ Supreme to hit y'all with the, <laughs> the black spin. All right. we talk about music. Go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. So we were talking about this the other day in the group chat. Somebody had a very interesting, do you even call them tweets anymore now that it's called? Act? I will always call yes, them tweets. Yes, yes. His so- mama call him Clay. I'm going to call him Clay. <laughs> So, uh, shout out to uh, Ray Eagle. I guess that's how I'm saying her screen name, right? She says, I don't like to be in white people's business, but am I wrong if I say that I think Britney was a bigger pop star than Taylor? Like, in terms of reach, Britney reached me, a black kid from the hood, Taylor didn't. So, we're talking about white artists that crossed over that you may like. Now, I know y'all are like, it's Black History Month! <laughs> Blue-eyed soul. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's interesting because I feel like there's artists that cross over and then, like, cross back, mm. right? Like, I feel like Justin Timberlake, like, really came out swinging to yeah, Black people. Yeah. Like, he had the clips on a record, right? right. Like, because he was with Neptunes. And yeah. and um, he was with Neptunes, and he was also working with Timberland. So I feel like he came out that way. But then... I don't know if it's I feel like I can demarcate it at the the Super Bowl, but I feel like he he fell off like the crossover. He fell off the cross. He'll jump on and then jump off. Like when he had the one with Jay-Z, um, what was it, suit and tie? It was kind of like he was back on it. Then he got it. That was a little moment. I was DJing at that time. Do you know um any Taylor Swift songs? I really know one Taylor Swift song. I only know one, and it's from the last album, um, and it's called Covert Narcissist, and it oh, goes... Oh, wow. Album cut. <laughs> <laughs> it goes... Uh, no, and it's... um, Me, me, I'm the problem, it's me. And the only reason I know it is because when I heard it at my next-door neighbor's house, I was like, oh. if all women sang, if all white women could really understand that, mm-hmm. we'd have a different world. I know uh, Shake It All. That's the only one I know. Oh, yeah. If you're going to shake it off. You know, that's the kind of song where it's like it came out and I was like, I don't ever have to hear this again. Yeah. (laughs) It was everywhere. It was everywhere. Are there any other white crossover artists that you know from crossing over that, you know, align with your spirit? Um, I'm not different. I'm not even saying that they necessarily align with my spirit, but like Adele, I feel like is a crossover that aligns with a lot of black people's spirit. Mm, like she yeah. really like got into that space. Um, you know, that's a really tough one because are we calling Eminem a crossover? I feel like he was, he never crossed over because he was always over here. <laughs> Um, I feel like more like with Eminem, Eminem is kind of funny to me because I don't really feel like Eminem had any songs that were club bangers. So I've never been to a club like, yo, turn that Eminem on like ever, even if it was a crossover type club. So that's where I don't feel like Eminem has ever really crossed over to a black artist audience because he doesn't really have that club banger for you. I have one. What's that? Michael McDonald. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say <laughs> that one. Yes. I can't forget. And yes. Bobby Womack. I mean not Bobby Womack. Bobby, um, come on. Um, I know who you're talking about. Oh there school. are times yes. when yes. you need yes. some Bobby Caldwell. Yes. People didn't yeah. even know he was black. And did you know that when he came out, they purposely didn't put his face on the cover of his album because really? they knew his sound was so black. And they didn't want it to undermine black audiences buying it. Wow. I think Tina Marie is the same way. Like, Tina Marie. (gasps) Great one. I think she might be the one. Yeah. I think she might be the ultimate one. Yeah. She's the ultimate one. Yeah. Because I don't know that any white people know who Tina Marie is. (laughs) Uh, Lisa Stansfield, um, been around the world. And I, even though she's a one hit wonder, but yeah. But it's that, that, that did hit. Yeah, Yeah. That hit. Um, so here's one that came and then went back across pink. Yeah. She did start out like with more of a marketing plan towards a black audience. Cause she was on La face yes. and she had baby face writing for her. And then she, I, I, I don't know. Oh, I ain't seen yeah. a pink 
I don't know, a pink song since she was swinging from the rafters at the Post Grammys. Post Malone is like that, too. Post Malone. Oh, really? Yes. White Iverson was more like supposed to be like a hip hop song. And then it uh-huh. kind of just, he just went and crossed over and he was gone. <laughs> All right, bye, post. All right. Um, well, there you have it. There you have it. But one thing we have to remember about all of them is that they are performing black music. Absolutely. All right. And the only reason we're even giving them credit is because these are folks who have actually acknowledged I am performing black music. Honorable mention, John B. He's the male version of Tina Marie. Yes, yes. Come on. <laughs> he had it. They don't know about this. Sin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you have it, y'all. See? There you have it. We'll be right back, y'all. It's the Amanda Steele Show. Happy Black History Month. <laughs> we up, we up, we up. 